Hello, it's Dave Sells and Hughes doing another kind of unboxing thing. Um, it's not really an unboxing because there's no box, it's an envelope and another envelope on which is my address. So give me a second, just let me turn that the other way around. There we go, that's better. Um, yeah, so what this is all about is um, some time ago Sainsbury's announced that they were doing Lego cards. Now you've probably seen these before online. They're uh, all kinds of little Lego pictures of figures and little models you can make. And uh, The figures are all from their minifigure blind bag sets. Um, when I originally saw it I thought, yeah fair enough, it's a Lego thing, but it's cards, it's not figures, it's not something I'd really be that interested in getting. Um, and then I took another look, uh, saw a couple of reviews of them online, and you know, there's a few things you can do with them. There's, you know, there's a little game built in. You know, you've you've, you've actually got on the, the sort of majority of the cards, you've got rock paper scissors, so you can play rock paper scissors with them. Um, on the back, you've got a little dominoes game. So all the all the backings of these cards, apart from obviously all the ones I've just, that's weird. Just everything is the same there. There's different designs on the back of them, and it doesn't necessarily go with the same design on the front. You get different ones there, but there seems to be quite a lot of these ones. But, uh, but yeah, so you've got uh, you've got uh, yeah, so two little games you can play with them, and they're a cool little collectible thing. They're not a particularly big uh, collection as such. There's 120 cards or something like that, or 202 cards. I don't know. I can't remember. But um. I'm into Lego, so I was kind of towards the tail end of it. Um, I started getting into them, and I thought I'm quite happy to collect some of those. And I realised that there was a few other bits and pieces you could do with them as well. There's a book you can collect them in, and so on. So by the time I got round to thinking about getting that kind of thing, uh, Sainsbury's were out of stock of the the ones you could buy as a separate pack, and the books themselves. So the books were only two pound from Sainsbury's, and ridiculously enough, you can pick them up for something on the order of twenty five pounds now on auctions on eBay. But you can thankfully buy them straight out on uh, pay it now, buy it now for a lot less. So I did so, and here you have the fruits of my labour. A pack of, hopefully, apparently 50 packs of the, the four pack cards, and the book, I'm hoping. So that's spoiled it for you as to what's in here already, but that's not really the point of the video. One point of the video is to show you what sort of what you get and uh, see what we get on there. So I'm going to use the, the trademarked bat knife. My own design, I would say, based on the original design of bat knife, which you can get on Thingiverse, and as popularised by Barnacle's Nerdgasm. Um, I've also made a few modifications myself, because I'm that kind of person, and if you have a 3D printer, why not use the damn thing? And if you have a 3D, 3D design ability, why not use that as well? So, yeah. As then a slightly more robust um, and uniform model to go with the concept of the back knife, which is essentially a letter opener. That's all it should really be used for. Damn it, there's my address. That means I'm now going to have to edit this video. And there we have it. So let's see what's in here. Lots and lots of packs of cards. I'm just going to make sure I've got the right count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fifty packs. So, my eBay review for this custom, for this uh, seller will be positive, and I have indeed fifty packs of the four pack. So, will I open them all? Yes, I will. Am I going to do that online? No, I am not. You've seen pretty much what they are. This is pretty much what they are. Pictures of kits. The, the blind bag stuff, a few little create your own ideas, and uh, yeah, so pretty good. I'm happy with that. That has come back as expected. So next is 
the book hopefully. Bat knife not so good at opening plastic bags. But the pointy end goes in rather well. And it does actually work. You just need to put a bit of tension on the plastic and it cuts through. So bat knife, not a bad design. The old bat knife there. You know, a bit of a your pointy end on there, your your pointy end there goes in quite well and does a good job. So yeah. And there we go. The Create the World Collector's Book. This is pretty much the focus of the, the sort of unboxing. Oh, they're crisp there. Go away. Um, essentially because I just wanted to have a look through it myself, and I thought if I'm going to do that, I might as well share it. So you've got a bit of... As you can see, it's pretty much targeted at kids. I'm way too old for this shit, but um, it's fun. It's Lego. It's a pretty good thing to collect, and I quite like it. I'm hoping I can get the entire collection. I'm not kidding myself. Buying 50 packets of the things probably isn't going to get me the whole collection. But there are services you can use. The Sainsbury's themselves do a swap shop on a Monday where you can go in and hopefully swap for other things. So that's going to be fun. Me going to that and being 20 years older than anybody else that's there is going to be interesting. Oh well, 40 years older, really. 30 years older. Let's be, let's average it out. So yeah, you've got the, the introduction to it there. Apparently these are the two main characters for the, the whole set. The, and the story behind it is that they're off. They, they they kind of go around the world and create stuff. Now this this car, this kit, by the way, um, this car here comes as a kit. The only tie-in set they've actually released to go with it. One sec, I've actually got it sitting around here somewhere. Oh, it's all sitting in the three pin. Yeah, there it is. Rid of that tape. Yeah. There's the car. Isn't that cool? So not only have they done the cards, not only have they done the book, but they've done a little tie-in kit. So you get the two main characters, whose name I can't remember. Pip and Jane? Bob and Mar Marley? I don't know. But yeah, there's the kit that goes with it. Um, looking forward to building that at some point. Um, so yeah, you've got the two main characters, who are driving around the world in their little buggy. Um, and then you've got places you can start putting the cards. And these are the two There you go, Lily and Sam. An auto. Oh, the car has a name. Auto as a car. There's a story behind the car. Auto as a car. So what is auto then? Is it like a library computer or something? The loyal vehicle auto on off-road transport and travel object. Auto on. There you go. It can become a car, boat, cool. Oh, because it's a three-in-one kit. Ah, so, yeah, the three-in-one kit idea. So there you go, Otto as a car, Otto as a boat, and Otto as a helicopter with no rotor blades. That won't fly. I'm sorry, but despite the picture there, that is not going to fly. There isn't enough lift. Yes. So there must be some magical thing going on there. Hmm. Probably never know where it is. It's magic Lego. Um, obviously air and lift in the Lego world are a bit different to what they are in ours. So yeah, you have different countries, have different codes, so we have the, the, the colours on the cards. No, they aren't. So the colours must be something... Oh, they, they have coloured backgrounds though. So there's a blue background on that one. I thought that was just something to do with the actual kind of subject matter. Brown blue, brown, brown. Okay, interesting. Interesting. There's colours. That might mean something. We will find out. Um, so yeah, you've got a little slot there to put your cards in. I assume that separates out. Yes, it does. You can slot your cards in there. So they slot in by the corners. I don't have cards one and two as of yet. Um, and you can go various different places. So you've got Europe. You've got Africa. So yeah, obviously various different places you can slot your cards in, a bit of story behind everything, some information about the world. Quite a good little educational product actually. Um if you if you're if you're a youngster, not a forty three year old person who's trying to relive his childhood through Lego, um that's not a bad little bit of kit. That'll probably be quite educational as far as geography is concerned. And uh, hopefully animals and nature and by the look of it, that kind of stuff. It's all a very natural thing, so it's about it's obviously tied in with kind of conservation and 
um, animal welfare and preserving our environment and all that kind of stuff, which is a very noble goal to have. Uh, and then of course it goes to North America, which sadly includes the United States of America, who honestly don't give a shit about the environment, at least as far as their leadership's concerned. Oh, better politics there. Um, so yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm quite looking forward. So at the back there, you've got some instructions on how to play the different games. Um, you've got your last cards in there. So 140 cards is that then? So you've got instructions on how to play your Domino's game on there. That's pretty cool. You've got instructions on how to play Rock, Paper, Scissors there, which is pretty cool. And at the back there, you've got... Is it a checklist? Let's have a look on the actual screen. Yeah, it's a checklist of all the cards you can get. So that is 140 cards. Sam and Lily card 1 and 2. Sam and Lily cards 139, 140. Will it focus? Yes, it will. Apologies for the focusing issues there. Camera decides it's going to do something bizarre and it won't do anything else. So, yeah. Want to build the Lego models you've seen on your Create Cards? Here's how. Type the link below into your browser and enter the number in brackets next to the model you want to build. So there are online instructions for those little models, which is a nice idea. I thought it was just something that, look at the picture, then work out how to build it yourself. Which, to be fair, isn't that hard, because they're quite simple little models, aren't they? Can I get that actually in focus? Where's the controls for this bloody camera? Stupidest. This is a problem that I think, from what I've seen lots of YouTubers have, that the camera just won't bloody behave. Right. Let's use the actual camera's ordinary focus. Let's take off auto focus and let's use the manual focus. So there you go. So you've got a little dinosaur model there. Um, as I said, I thought that was more of something just work it out for yourself and sort it out. And uh, a bit of information about the dinosaurs. Fear not, dinosaurs have been extinct for a long time. Millions of years ago, they thrived in places like Argentina. Build a huge dinosaur bone using white Lego bricks only. So a challenge as well. Nice stuff. I like it. It's good stuff. I like it. So, yeah, that's the, the Lego Create book. Lego Create the World book. Can we focus? Yes, we can. So, yeah, quite happy with that. That cost me £8 on eBay. Um, just as a buy it now option. Uh, it was the cheapest one I could find. It took a lot of hunting to find it because usually you're looking at something like a tenner and then a couple of quid for postage. Um, but this one I was lucky enough to find for £8 with free postage. Um, but as I said, I have seen them in, in auctions on eBay, for example, going for something like 25 to 30 quid, which is an amazing markup for a book that cost £2 in Sainsbury's. £2. But then they are a very limited edition, because Sainsbury's are only doing them for a month, because it all finished on the 13th of June, which is awesome, because I'm now putting this video out there when it's all finished and you can't buy them anymore. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, so um, obviously I missed the boat with it because I wasn't aware they were doing them, at least to this level. I was aware there were cards and I was like, pfft, cards. Um, getting four for a tenner, which was quite a lot. But you get, then the more you think about it, you get shopping for that tenner as well. So basically you buy a tenner's worth of shopping and you get a pack of these. You get a pack of cards as well. Um, then the early days, obviously you could get the books in the shops and you could also get packs of four that you could buy for 50p a pack, I believe. And the smaller Sainsbury's, like the little you know, the, the little corner shop type idea, um, you could get packs of two for 25p or 50p or something like that anyway, at the little shops. Um, so yeah, they were, they were quite well available, but very limited run. So basically when a store, well, a store was given a certain amount, and when they ran out, that was it. You wouldn't get any more in. So that's why the books were hard to get, because they went really quickly, apparently. Um, the demand for them was really high, but the supply was nowhere near coping with the amount of people that wanted them. So they ran out really quickly. Um, the ones that you could buy over the counter went really quickly, and obviously the limited stocks of the ones that you could sell, um, so that you could give away with the pack, with with your shopping, um, kind of the only thing you could left to get. So you were stuck with having to buy ten pound worth of shopping to get a pack of cards. So there's probably going to be a pretty big resale market for them in the future. Um, the prices of the books going up to 25 quid on auction is not a surprise to me um, but I'm not entirely sure how much further it's going to go because it's a kind of niche thing it's not a great big demand for it and we'll see how it goes alright I'm going to do a cut from this point um, I'm going to do eh, close 
I'm going to do a... Oh, I've zoomed out. Why the hell did that zoom out? It's also revealed the, the terrible secret that I'm actually filming on the desk at a weird angle. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a cut, uh, open all the packs, and then we'll go through them uh, as an end to the video. So, see you in a sec. <sighs> <sighs> right, fingers sore. Ow, throbbing. Ow. Okay, right, we're done. Uh, 50 packs, done. Right. <laughs> well, in honesty, it's actually 47 because I've still got three left. The um, reason I did that is because it was quite interesting on the way through. All the ones I bought from Sainsbury's while the offer was on, the packs were all the same. They were all packed the same way. Um, but I actually found there's three variances. Now, this is really fucking trivial, isn't it? It's really um, pedantic and anal. But there are three different ways that they've actually packed the cards. Now, the standard way, the one that I'm used to, is, just let me check, I have slightly opened them, is this one. Um, which is, they are packed like so. So you have your shiny card on top facing kind of one way, a particular way. So there's the way around the pack is, if I turn that that way, is the pack is upside down and the card is the right way up. And then you take them out, throw the wrapper away, and then the other cards, the normal cards, are packaged that way around. Now this is the standard bit, because this, this way is the way that they all are all the time. Whereas this is the bit that changes. So these all go the same way, so I'm going to put these in the, in the, in, in the pile, and I'm going to put these in the other pile. The other way, as I said, is you have this way up. So the same pack's the same way up, upside down as far as you're looking at it there, but right way up for me. You open that, and the card inside, which is interestingly the same card, um, is upside down. So the same way around as the pack. But then you open that, and again, these cards are the same around. So that's one variant. I'll add that to the pile, goes to the pile. And the last way is the consistent way. Slightly inconsistent, because it's that way around. Which is face down, but upside down in comparison to the rest of the pack. Which is the right way up. So there you go. Three different variances. Interesting. That's a different card look as well. It's not the snowmobile for a change. So, there you go. Now, that's 50 packs of cards opened. Now, this is the cards I've managed to get um, while Sainsbury's was doing the offer. Now, this is pretty poor in comparison to what I'm going to show you next. So that's my that's the height of my pile of legitimately bought from Sainsbury's as part of their deal cards. Now, just the shinies from 50 packs of cards, or just the shiny cards, it's this much. All shiny cards. So with my, my purchase, which I've got to say, the actual card packs that I bought, 50 packs of the four packs from a trader on eBay whose name I can't remember, which I probably should look up um, to publicise the guy, um, is actually smaller than the amount I've just paid. So that represents about 120 quid's worth of shopping. Um, whereas that, the shiny cards alone, which is 50 cards, obviously, represents £20 spent on eBay. Now, there is the actual ordinary Lego cards um, I have bought. So that's, what, 150 cards? Yeah. So technically, 150 cards for 15 quid, say. There's the shiny cards. So in total, there's your entire amount of cards purchased for 20 quid, which is good. And I'm hoping that I'm going to get a significant amount of individual cards from that. Um, the range of cards isn't that big. Um, so the potential for duplication and your doubles um, are, is pretty high number. So there's the cards we have. We have an ancient ship. We have a snowmobile. We have a sand castle. We have a cute little bandit. Submarine, double decker bus. Can I get that out of the shine? No. A windmill, a barret, a ghost house, 
a dragon, a spaceship, a toucan, a polar bear, and I think that's it. Is it a parrot or a toucan? It's a toucan. Oh, I've also got a parrot then. There's a parrot as well for you. As I say, I think that's it. I think that's all of them. I don't remember it being a particularly large amount of shiny cars that you could get. Um, oh no, wait a minute. Asian house. There we go. Did I do the dinosaur? Dinosaur. Chameleon. Oh, crap, that's a lot more than I thought. Tree. Koala. Crap. Um, yeah, so, there you go. That's quite a few cards there, I think. Um, so I'm hoping that's the lot. That's actually more than I thought. Um, cause I th interestingly enough, the ones that I bought from Sainsbury's, these ones, so the dinosaur, the tree, the chameleon, the koala, um, did not appear in the ones that I've just bought at all, which is an interesting thing. So that makes me wonder whether um, there's actually like a, a variety of different ranges of them, or um, a box comes with a certain amount of things, or whatever. So I don't know, that's that's kind of worried me now. I wouldn't have thought so, I thought it'd be like a standard thing. It might just be the way that it's come out, it might be a coinkydink, but I don't know. So yeah, there you go. Many, many cards. So that's all my shiny cards. That's all the unique ones on top, so potentially that's all the doubles. That's my original pack. So that's the doubles of the shinies and that's the original pack. So as I say, there's a high potential for duplication. Um, when you only have a, a limited amount of cards and you buy 50 packs and you only have one of a particular sort of card in there, then it's obviously going to be slightly on the, on the dodgy side. So yeah, so there's the, the different cards there. Uh, Lady Cyclops, Toolman, Thespian, Carpenter, Businessman, Hot Dog Man, Spider Lady, Chicken Suit Guy, Sam! Sam! Yes! Nurse, Tea Captain. So, yeah, lots of things that if you collect the blind bags, you will recognise immediately. I started off collecting the blind bags, and then I got really bored of having to pressurise and find different things, different ways of finding it. And when it eventually got to the point where you couldn't trust even the little dot codes, and you were having to literally stand in front of shops pushing and poking at different things and yeah essentially just getting in the way of people who are actually trying to buy the fucking things um yeah it became a bit of a chore so i gave up on it and it's quite sad because i do like them but then i have limited space and limited time and limited ability to be arsed with doing stupid things to get cards so yeah that's the lot um so that pretty much covers it i think um, I'm obviously going to go through these now and put them into the book and once I've done that I'll uh, do a follow up am I going to jump cut and do that now? potentially yes ta-da! it is done right I've gone through and I've put pretty much as much as I can get in into there just let me level that off again so uh, what I'll do is I'm going to set this camera to auto, auto focus uh, off Configure video, auto focus off, and we'll be able to see that hopefully without any interruptions. I'll put that light off so it's not shining on the thing. It's the wrong damn light. I'll put that light off so it's not shining on the thing. Um, so yeah, I've spent the last god knows how long, probably about an hour, putting these cards in, and I had a bit of a quick read of it while I was going through, and uh, it's a pretty good informative little book. Um, so you've got your your flying off. The only thing I would say is that some of the little because what they've got is when you've got a card in there, you've got to uh, see if I can focus a bit closer in on there, kind of, but as good as I can get. I'll come up a little bit. So each of the little cards has a a bit of a statement in there, a bit of a little joke, and uh, it serves to tenuously sometimes link the card in with the. Uh, with the scene that it's in, or with the area that it's in, so you get quite a few little 
little statements that go quite well. So that's a funny looking spaceship for the Eiffel Tower, that's not bad. How long did I sleep for this place is a ruin? Quite good, not bad. Um, some of them are very tenuous and some of them are quite good. And obviously the, the create cards, which have been created specifically for the book, another thing that kind of go tie in with the product more than anything else, um, are obviously relevant to the area that you're in as well. So that does fit quite well. Um, these cards, obviously these... <laughs> it's a bit odd. I mean, it's, it's obviously a bit of a Lego marketing thing. These are our mini fig blind bag toys that you can get. But you can't get them anymore. I mean, Lego don't sell the blind bag series continually. They only sell the series for a limited amount of time and then you can't get them anymore. So, other than collectors um, who are quite keen on things like trading cards, um, I don't really see the, the marketing value of this this set, of this series. Um, so, a bit sad. There you go. So, um, as I say, a little bit ties in quite well. You usually get some some pretty good scenery. You get a little bit of information, some stats, a bit of history. Not well, sometimes history, sometimes geography, sometimes nature, so on. And it looks pretty good. And one thing that has become clear is there's a hell of a lot of cards missing. More of these, which are the create the world cards, the the, the shiny ones. There's more of them missing than I thought there would be from my collection. I thought I got quite a few, but it turns out I've got about half. So yeah, I'm missing quite a few, which is a shame. Um, one of the things about trading card books or sticker books that I like is that you have these different achievement levels um, as far as I'm concerned. Obviously getting some shinies is one achievement, getting all the shinies on a page is an achievement and getting all the cards or stickers on a page is an achievement and I'm pissed off to say that not one double page spread is complete out of the ones that I've got. Um, ordering the cards revealed that there are a huge amount of gaps and a huge amount of doubles um, and it's almost as if there's a limited range because I have situations where I've got certain cards, there's like 10 of the card, but none of something else that's right next to it. So I mean I've got none of them. Uh, what was the one I got most of? Um, I mean I've got a good few of them, I've got about 5 or 6 of them. Um, but none of, th just none of them. And I'm actually wondering if there's a rarity thing going on with the cards, and it's one thing I didn't check when I got to the back of the book actually, was whether there's a rarity value on each one. I get the feeling there is, given that there's different colours. Uh, I don't know actually. It doesn't specifically say, in the change of colours, only there's a red one for the create ones, which have a number next to them for the website, so you can build that particular model. And there's a little sample of the instruction there for it. But the rest of them are all the same colour. So, um, doesn't there seem to be a rarity thing involved, which makes it even more mystifying. And look at that, look at that, one card missing. One card missing. One. One. God damn it. Um, so I'm a bit confused as to what as, as to whether maybe the situation is that there's there's a certain cards that are in the two pack that you can get from the little shops, certain cards that you can get only in the four pack that you have to buy over the counter, and certain cards you only get from the ones you get over the till. But even that's kind of weird because the the, the 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 pack of fifty that I bought from the guy on eBay um, had a limited range. Um, there was duplicates of a hell of a lot of cards, like this one for example, um, and the crazy scientist. There was quite a few of them. Whereas, I mean, I got four of them. I even got two of a card in one pack. Um, but this, the Alien Explorer, I had from the se from the sets that I've bought around Derby. So, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, what's the word? I'm a bit suspicious that Lego have done it as a bit of a marketing thing to make you try and buy as much as you possibly can from them or at least make it into something where it becomes a quest to try and finish your collection and I'm not overly keen on that idea, I think they've been a bit sneaky with it um, so yeah, n not a good play Lego um, or Sainsbury's to be honest um, it's obviously a thing that's, I mean these things are obviously marketing campaigns that are designed to bring more, foot, more feet through the door and get more people to put their hands in their pockets do a bigger shop and then obviously publicise Lego a bit but 
as a collector of these types of things, it would be a little bit annoying if you found that you can only get certain cards in certain areas of the country. Um, or in certain areas. Like if you've got to go to get certain cards, you've got to go and buy lots of stuff at your local Sainsbury's, your, your Sainsbury's local shop. Um, and there's no way of getting certain cards because they're only available in the the red pack that you can buy over the counter. Not sure if that's a particularly fair way to do things, but then, you know, it's marketing, it's retail, it's not fair. But overall, this collection itself, if I can finish this collection, I'll be extremely chuffed. I think it'll be a lovely little collection of cards to have. I love these. I love the fact that I've got the two shinies on that one page, but I get missing one! Um, and there's obviously going to be a little bit of hobbycraft involved in uh, putting these together. And I think it's more of a challenge for me as an adult collector of LEGO. Um, to be able to try and work out how to build them myself, and get the bits myself, and then build it. Um, that would be fun. Um, but obviously then if I get stuck, I've got the option to go online and get the plants. Yay! So it's best of both worlds, really. Um, so what do I think of it? I think it's pretty good. I think that it's... Uh, for what it was costing you in the shops, it's not a bad value for money. Um, in order to try and finish a collection like this, I'm either going to have to try and go to these swap shops in Sainsbury's on a Monday, if they still do them. I'm hoping they do. Um, or I'm going to have to start getting them online, which could be quite expensive to do. Uh, but I'm quite... yeah, I quite like it overall. I like it. It's a good little gimmick, a good little thing. Um, if it's only ever going to be a one-off thing, then I don't think it's really worth doing. If it's something they're going to keep going, and hopefully expand it out into different stores or into Toys R Us or so you can actually go and buy the packs themselves I'd be right on board with it. Having been restricted to only getting the packs over the counter when you've bought 20 quid's worth of shopping is, a, is limited and if they're only going to send limited amounts of stock to certain stores then it's not particularly fair if you want to try and collect these seriously. Um, as kids, kids won't understand the whole kind of you can only get certain things or you can only get them with you buy shopping you know like mummy can i have 40 packs of cards please well no because i'm not prepared to buy 400 quids worth of shopping so you can have cards kids aren't going to get that um so i'm not sure if it's i'm not sure if it's targeted the right way i think it's a good idea it's a good start and i think if they're using it to try and gauge the market and see how they can do with it then possibly it might be a good thing come the next stage of this when they hopefully go sort of major league with it but we'll see. But as I say, I like it. I think that, um, my initial thoughts when I saw the original adverts were that it's a bit of a gimmick, their cards are a bit crap, but I like what they've done with them. Now I've actually started getting some of them and putting them into the book, I can see how it all goes together. It's a very educational thing that will be useful for kids. Um, and the cards themselves do tie in well, um, and they're a good little showcase for them. So they've got little games on them as well. You can play rock, paper, scissors, or you can play dominoes, which is a good little touch. So if you've got doubles, it's not the end of the world. It's a, that's, again, it's been thought out pretty well, but I think there's a little bit of nefarious commercial planning in the background that I would have thought better of LEGO for. You're going to piss the kids off, and you're going to make it quite frustrating for adults trying to complete collections. And when you bring those two sides of it together, adults trying to complete collections for kids is going to be a nightmare. But, uh, there you go. So as I say, not bad. I quite like it. Well done LEGO, well done Sainsbury's. Um, if you can grab them, I recommend getting them. If you've got kids, it's going to be a fantastic educational tool. If you're an adult like me that collects it, it's a good little gimmick and it gives you a little bit of things to do on, a, on those quiet or extremely warm summer days when you can't be arsed going outside because your face will burn like a big schnitzel. Thanks for watching.